Next on NBC 10 News, the battle over the job of Monroe Police Chief has come to an end. And some amazing video out of Bienville Parish where a truck literally had a run-in with a train. Plus, this heat is making for a very dangerous situation as wildfires spring up across Arkansas. That's next on NBC 10 News at 6. NBC 10, coverage you can count on. Live from our studios in West Monroe, this is NBC 10 News at 6. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for choosing NBC 10 News. I'm Rudy Williams. Well, the saga involving Monroe's chief of police has come to an end. After a lengthy investigation, Monroe Police Chief Ron Schluter is retiring. Now, this comes after the mayor demoted the chief to captain earlier this week for secretly recording their conversations. NBC 10's Nathan Lepper has our top story. It's been almost six months since Monroe Chief of Police Ron Schluter was caught hitting the record button. Recordings leaked to NBC10 of the police chief recording Mayor Jamie Mayo without him knowing about it. Wednesday, the mayor read Schluter's retirement letter. That I will retire as chief of police of the Monroe Police Department, effective at the end of the work week. In February, Schluter was put on paid leave until the investigation into his secret recordings ended. The discipline? Mayor Mayo ordered Schluter to be demoted to captain rather than termination. And there have been many positive things that have occurred during his 30-year tenure, so I commend him for that. At first, Schluter filed a suit to keep his job as chief. Mayo says because Schluter retired, all charges against him will be dropped, and he'll retire as chief, leaving with the same pay. We can restore the confidence of uh, internal plus external um, public confidence. As for the over $60,000 the city has paid to investigate the chief, that cost goes back to taxpayers. We are not requesting uh, Chief Sluder to repay anything. Uh, he's made the decision to retire. We're accepting uh, his letter. Mayo says he's just ready to put the long investigation behind him and move forward with Herbert Otwell serving as interim chief. We want to assure the citizens of Monroe that we're going to be proactive in our efforts to protect them. And, and as for recording city employees without them knowing it, Mayor Mayo says it's a matter the city needs to look into. Nathan Letford, NBC 10 News. City officials say the search process for a new chief could take up to six months to complete. Well, now that Ron Schluter is retiring, what's in store for the chief's future? Well, Schluter's attorney says the chief has no plans to sue the city to recover his legal fees. NBC 10's Daisy O'Donnell has more. Nothing derogatory on there. It's a simple conversation. After 30 years protecting, serving, and leading Monroe, Chief Ron Schluter will turn in his uniform and badge forever this Saturday without a fight. I think he's going to find uh, opportunities that are very interesting and exciting for him, and he has financial security now. Schluter will bankroll a $102,000 pension for life after the mayors agreed to fully dismiss the demotion of the chief. It was a demotion uh, of major consequences to him in terms of pay. Schluter's attorney Brian Crawford says he was ready for a showdown in court, but now it's time to move on. Ron Schluter will not sue the city. The city has released him from any uh, investigative processes and disciplinary actions. And if Schluter were to have taken his battle to court, 700 pages of the city's evidence against him, plus all of his secret tapes, would be public. Schluter's attorneys say he decided to retire because the situation at work would have been hostile. It's an end to an investigation that cost you, the taxpayers, over $60,000 to foot the city's legal bill. But here's the million dollar question everyone wants to know. What was really on those tapes? Did Ron Schluter on those tapes have Jamie Mayo saying something negative or embarrassing or illegal? I am not going to comment on that because it would not be uh, to anyone's benefit for me to say anything about that at this time. Daisy O'Donnell, NBC 10 News. Schluter's attorney also tells NBC 10 that even if the chief continued to fight for his job in court, all he would get back was his job, which wasn't enough of financial incentive. Well, it's been a record-breaking day across the Arklamas today. For a look at the weather, here's meteorologist Kaylee Klosterbeyer with your first forecast. Kaylee? 
scorcher across the region today. Currently in Monroe, we are at 102. It feels like 115 out there, so that's no surprise. We've been dealing with this for the past couple of days. In Monroe, we have broken the record high four days in a row, so you can see we're pretty used to all this warm weather, and we're going to be dealing with the warm weather for a couple more days. 80 degrees for that overnight low tonight. A little dip in temperatures, 100 degrees for tomorrow with some isolated afternoon rain chances. Some of those rain chances and storm chances could become severe, so we're going to keep an eye on that, and more with your forecast is coming up. All right, thanks a lot, Kaylee. Well, as if temperatures of more than 100 degrees aren't bad enough, wildfires are now popping up across scorched parts of Arkansas. Lives, homes, and crops are even being threatened. Lauren Traeger shows us what firefighters are up against. We're kind of at the mercy of, of it. Billowing smoke, grass and trees licked by flames, an all too common sight in recent days. This is our summer fire season. Uh, high temperatures, uh, low afternoon humidities. It's really when we start having some pretty big fires like this one. Tuesday afternoon, an estimated 50 acres caught fire on the Lone Oak Prairie County line. Two days earlier, in Pulaski County, a fire crept near homes too close for comfort. But here, it was money going up in smoke. This fire here is a hardwood plantation. I mean, there's significant value in the trees out here that are being burned. We went inside the fire line, but the first boots on the ground. Local fire departments stamping out what's still smoldering, trying to keep it from spreading. The heat of the day, making it all much worse. It's pitiful. It's hard on us. It's hard on the grass. I mean, it's just, it's probably, it's just too hot. But then, in the sky, relief arrives. The Forestry Commission's planes releasing thousands of gallons of water. Then, with bulldozers cutting the brush, they finish the job. All this because someone's big mistake. Careless burning, cigarettes, people burning trash, ashes. Be very careful with any outdoor burning, observe the burn bans, and uh, just use common sense. This advice, even as they know their work is never over. Another fire, only a matter of time. They don't get the message. It's every day now. You'll get it every day now. That was Lauren Traeger reporting. Now, authorities say while some people do start fires on purpose, sometimes it's just an, a careless accident. They say any burning is strongly discouraged. People should also be mindful that even sparks from lawnmowers and hay baling equipment can start a wildfire. In other news, closing arguments have begun in the trial of a doctor accused of trying to kill the chairman of the Arkansas State Medical Board. Dr. Randy Mann is accused of planting a bomb that injured Dr. Trent Pierce here outside his West Memphis home. Now, after closing arguments, the jury will begin deliberations, but the judge indicated the jury may not start those deliberations until Thursday because closing arguments are expected to run late. Well, now to the oil disaster in the Gulf. An underwater camera shows no oil leaking out of the blown out well during the static kill. The underwater shot of BP's oil well is looking a little different these days, and that's because it's missing a huge black plume of oil. Crews are working to make sure it stays that way by pumping heavy mud down into the well. That process is called a static kill. You can see the top of the containment cap, which has been keeping oil from leaking out of the well since last month. The static kill started last night, and officials say so far it's going as planned. Crews will also seal the well from the bottom through a relief well. Basically have uh, reached a uh, static condition in the well that allows us to have high confidence that there will be no oil uh, leaking into the environment and we have significantly improved our chances uh, to finally kill the well with the relief wells when that does occur. A White House Energy Advisor says the relief well should be completed in the next two weeks. Well up next there's progress here in Monroe too and it's on the Monroe Airport Terminal. But what's it going to look like inside? We'll tell you straight ahead. Wardrobe provided by the Toggery and her Toggery.